Mary Swansea was born in Dublin in 1882. She is of a generation of Irish artists who were educated in Paris before the First World War. There, she literally witnessed the birth of modern art, from post-impressionism through to fauvism, cubism, then on to futurism and even surrealism. Each of these individual styles she observed, digested its principles and then produced artworks which are very distinctively her own. In room one we see the first works that Swansea exhibited in Dublin. Beside me is a portrait of her father which she exhibited in 1905. You can see that it is done in a very formal academic style which is reminiscent of late Victorian painting. This painting proves that Mary Swansea had already mastered the academic style at a very young age. She was just 23 years old. Dublin basically had no more to teach the young artist, so she went to Paris to further her training between 1904 and 1906. The next painting that we see in the exhibition is a portrait of her younger sister, Muriel. Here we can see the startling differences that occurred in Swansea's style while she was being trained in Paris. There is a new distinctive hatching style that she is painting in. Rather than creating a beautifully finished surface, the paint has been broken up into individual brush strokes and where possible, pure colour. Although the face of Muriel is completed in a very beautiful naturalistic style, the hands are almost purely abstract and this is a typical post-impressionist concern. Swansea was unusual among Irish artists in that she exhibited the Paris salons very early in her career. In 1919 she exhibited tulips and we can see that it is really the pinnacle of her achievement in the post-impressionist style. The other painting that Swansea exhibited in the 1919 Beaux-Arts was La Poupée Japonaise, the Japanese doll. This is the first painting that we know of by an Irish artist in a Cubist style. We can see that unlike the previous paintings, which were post-impressionist in style and concerned with breaking up of colour, here we see the artist breaking up the picture plane. If you look closely, you can see that removing the face gives us a work of almost complete geometric abstraction. This is really typical of Swansea because she is absorbing the elements of these styles, digesting them and making them her own. In 1923, Swansea set off on her most ambitious voyage yet. She travelled halfway across the world to Hawaii and Samoa. She went to Hawaii because her uncle Francis worked there as a successful sugar merchant. We can see his house and garden in works like the Maison Blanche and the Honolulu Garden. There we can see Swansea observe the life of the colonial classes who, for example, are taking tea on the lawn. In the following year, she made the epic journey two and a half thousand miles to Samoa. There she made one of the most iconic bodies of work ever painted by an Irish artist. She depicted the incredible richness of the forest she found with banana trees and other tropical plants. Importantly, she also depicted the lives of the native peoples. Unlike her predecessor, the French painter Paul Gauguin, Swansea always depicts the people of the islands, both male and female, busily occupied with their daily tasks. We see figures carrying heavy loads and leading animals, women preparing food for their families or washing their children in the stream. This shows Swansea taking a feminist and liberal view of the lives of these people at a time when they were described by people like Gauguin as noble savages. In the mid-1920s, when Swansea returned to Europe, she continued to work in a Cubist style. However, in many cases, it is suffused with a particular type of surrealism. One of the peculiarities of Swansea's work is that she insists on integrating a narrative into her work. She does this by adding human figures to her compositions. For example, in The Storm, where we see tiny figures fleeing from a catastrophe happening in a medieval setting. This confused critics, who described her as a surrealist working in a Cubist convention. But this is very typical because it is very hard to pin her down. She refuses to be categorised or labelled in any easy way. In room five, we can see Swansea's complex personal narratives combined with an interest in world religions, Renaissance art and ancient ritual. For example, composition from 1927 continues the use of cubist form and surrealist content. We see a figure of God the Father derived from Christian tradition, surrounded by what appear to be demonic armies and choirs of angels. Beside him is Horus, the Egyptian falcon-headed god, set in an ancient classical landscape. Then we see allegory, which shows half of a giant Buddha emerging from a lotus flower. Above him, there appears to be another angel figure descending with a reaper's sickle in his hand, intent on the many people below. After the Second World War, Swansea returned to London, where she embarked on some of the strangest and most fantastical works ever made by an Irish artist. Roundabout, Strange World and Winning the Race 
all have the quality of an interrupted narrative. The scenes are populated by recognizably human figures in everyday dress, but they're accompanied by other people who have been reduced to satirical caricatures, human-animal hybrids, many types of animals like horses, pigs, cats, and especially birds. This strange assembly of characters make the images appear like scenes from the world of science fiction, rather than deriving from an art historical lineage. Three works from the period of the Second World War can be seen on the opposite wall. Potato Famine and This Is Our Gift, Our Portion Apart show how women are particularly affected at times of war and crisis. Scarecrows shows a strange kind of garden party where ladies in evening dress dance in a field with a group of scarecrows. The scene of able-bodied women dancing with mutilated men calls to mind the aftermath of both world wars when men returned from the battlefields with missing limbs and many other deformities. The war is also referenced in the portrait of Swansea's sister Muriel, done in 1942. She is shown looking out the window, strained with worry as she waits for her son to return from the war. Mary Swansea had an extraordinary life and an extraordinary career. Despite her fantastic record of achievement, there hasn't been a retrospective of her work in 50 years. We are delighted to present this selection of work and reintroduce her to our audiences as a modern Irish master.